about a month ago, I was reading an article about Robert Smith, who is a very, very successful private equity venture capitalist. And he was describing the three words of what motivated him to go out on his own and start his own firm. And it was, you are enough. And I thought, wow, that's really prophetic, because I was just trying to decide if I bring partners into my venture firm or keep going at it alone. And when I thought about this, you are enough, I thought, this has been my whole life. That's been my mantra. Because most of my life, I've been the only. I was the only African-American girl on my softball team. I was the only African-American gymnast, and I got kicked off my softball team for doing a cartwheel in the middle of a game. So, <laughs> so for the whole league, I was in my high school, I was the only African-American. When I was in college, I was the only African-American woman in my mechanical engineering classes. When I was in, see, oh, when I was on the space shuttle program, I was the only woman on the team for my project. When I was at my venture at my venture firm, I was the only woman who was an investment professional. And being and you are enough always meant I had to navigate different worlds, which means I had to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. I could feel great in a room full of CEOs, as I was in a room full of Buddhists, as I was in a room full of politicians. But not them all together. I think that might <laughs> drive me a little crazy. But the only also meant I never had a mentor that looked like me. And it meant that I had to be comfortable in a room full of men. And I was fortunate that these men became my mentors. They hired me, they advised me, they took me under their wings, they inter made introductions to me. But as I learned and I watched them, I learned to operate and manage like a man, which meant I was really confident. I could speak my mind whenever I wanted to. But it also meant I was impatient, I was competitive, I was hands-off, I wanted to create win-losses, and I valued control over partnerships. And I was good at it. This is one of those tests you take on Facebook, <laughs> and <laughs> they tell me, this is my brain. <laughs> but what I was really good at and what really excited me was working with entrepreneurs to help them grow their businesses. I love digging in and help them create win-wins. But what I soon learned that helping them create win-wins was the antithesis of the investment world and the venture capital world, where it was all very adversarial. So I would think to myself and ask myself this question, of, was I doing something wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Am I going to be seen as a weak girl because I wanted to work together? And I would look around and ask, look for someone to ask this question to, and there was no one that looked like me to ask this question. Because at this time, all the venture capitalists looked like this. Well, okay, not that bad, but, <laughs> you know, like this. <laughs> and all the entrepreneurs I was creating these great win-wins for looked like this and this. And I would literally meet with 100 companies a month, and not one of them was a woman, and there'd be a smattering of people of color. And at this time, it was the year 2000, and I always wondered what was going on here. Well, it turns out at this time, the numbers tell you the story, 5% of the capital from venture capital was going to women on management teams. Less than 3% were going to women CEOs. And only 10% of the VCs were women. Now this matters because entrepreneurs and their small and medium-sized businesses are the backbone of our economy. And women-owned businesses 
are growing faster than any businesses in the world. And these women are not getting the capital they need. They're getting loans, but you can't grow a business when you've got to service a loan. You have to pay something back. Loans slow down your business. If you want to get to the market really quickly and beat your competitors, you've got to have equity capital. You've got to have money you don't have to pay back. Now, don't get me wrong. I love this inter industry. industry excuse me. Nothing excites me or energizes me more than venture capital. I love connecting money to big, big ideas. But if I was going to stay in it, I wanted to change it. So I decided to start my own business and invest in women and people of color. Now, if I was really operating like a guy, if I really had the brain of a guy, I would have hung out my shingle right away and said, I am a venture capitalist. But as Susan Duffy from the Babson College of Center for Entrepreneurship said, men are overconfident, women think it through to a fault. So I was like, okay, I gotta get all the best credentials, I gotta learn everything, then I'll think about it, then I'll start my company. So on my path to starting my company, I got arrested <laughs> for fighting Walmart, because Walmart, when they come to town, they destroy small and medium-sized businesses by women and people of color. And then along my path, I picked up not one, but two MBAs, because I had to have, I was competitive and I had to have the best. But then the most important thing that I learned on my path, I got two female mentors. And I watched them, and I learned. And what I learned is women, we manage differently. The one thing I learned that we manage by consensus. We make decisions by consensus. Now there's pros and cons. Making decisions by consensus takes a really long time to get to that decision. That drove me a little crazy because that 70% of my male brain was like, come on, let's just start. But the other side of that is consensus empowers people to take on big things. Ergo, Walmart. And as I watched these women, what I really learned was that creating win-wins are the best wins. That women manage as well and as strongly as men, but differently. Women manage by collaborating. And through collaboration, we come up with the best and most innovative ideas. And that confident men partner with women. And strong, successful women have no problem making decisions. So I had to unlearn what I learned before. <laughs> now, I forgot to caution you guys. I am a blurred. I'm a black nerd. So I had to put up a Yoda. <laughs> now, why is it so important, this impact of women leading? Well, remember that big recession we had? If women had the same access to capital as men did during that time, we would have come out of a global recession a lot faster. So if investors only care about the returns and their bottom lines, and the numbers don't lie, why aren't they giving more money to women? To women, what's going on here? Well, it turns out, if you look back at those pictures that I had of the all white guys, it turns out they're all related. Think of it as six degrees from Yahoo, from Cisco, from Amazon. This is back in 2000. And you remember those numbers of how few women were getting the capital and how few women were venture capitalists? Now come back to the future, 15 years later. Now call it six degrees of PayPal, six degrees of Google, six degrees of Facebook. And those numbers, well, it's still 5% of the women getting the capital. It's still less than 3% of CEOs that are women getting the capital. 
But remember that number of 10% of VCs were women? It's 6%. We're going backwards. I don't know how that's possible. And then to throw more salt into our wounds? A man that's attractive has a 36% more increase of success rate. That means you could get the dumbest guy in the room <laughs> who looks amazing, would get money before Natasha and Freya and the entrepreneurs you heard from today. This is crazy to me. So, remember Robert Smith and his you are enough? I call BS on Robert Smith. <laughs> because it's, he's never had to be enough. And no men have had to be enough. They've had the right networks to do what they need to do. And for women, we've had to trudge through on our own all the time. It turns out that no one can do it alone. No one is really enough. And for us women, if we think we can do it alone, it's a red herring. It's a straw man. As Patricia Green said, we're saying it's the culture in venture capital companies. Women have been doing what they're supposed to do. They have the right education. They have the right experience. They want to grow their companies, but they're not in the right networks to get the venture capital. So what do we do? Well, we need to leverage our collective economic power and not wait for powerful men to give us some of those handouts. We need to issue a call to action to women to be less risk averse, to be more comfortable with making money. Move from philanthropy and move some of that money into women-owned businesses. In Invest in women investment firms. Invest in women-owned businesses. Hire and shop at women-owned businesses. All things being equal, hire women in management positions. And then teach our girls about business and investment beyond personal finance. And teach our girls to respect themselves and boys to respect women. Now, this isn't all about social good. This is an economic imperative. From a micro, microeconomic level at a corporate level, when there's more women on your, on your corporate boards, companies across the board find higher performances. Higher. All you need is put some women on your corporate board. <laughs> at a macro level, if women had the same access to capital, we would create six million jobs in five years. Now, to put that in perspective, here in the country, the unemployment numbers are 85 million. We'd, we'd create two million in the first year. And if we women were our own country, we'd be the fifth largest GDP in the world. After Germany, before the UK, Italy, and France. And by the year 2028, women will control 75% of the consumer discretionary um, spending. That's $12 trillion. So I think we're at a tipping point right now. Do you remember in 1992, when it was the year of the woman, we ushered in more women into Congress than ever before, and the same conversations were swirling about gender equality and gender equity, and then it stopped. So now, 20 odd years later, you're hearing the same conversation. The same issues are coming up. There are fewer women in almost every industry at the top level making decisions in corporations. And with Hillary Clinton in the race, they'll probably keep talking about the year of the woman until the presidential election ends, but it's up to us to not let it disappear like it did before. We are at a tipping point. We can't let this disappear because we are enough. Thank you.